Hey, welcome back, my fellow investors. It's me, E.T. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your financial advisor. I am just a self-taught investor who really loves to talk about ways to increase one's financial literacy. Now, today's video is about running and knowing your numbers. Don't be left in the dark. Don't always believe what you hear and what you see when it comes to uh, financial numbers. To give you an example, tell me which one of these is a good deal. A two year average return of 20% or a 5% return for two years. Which one's a better deal? Are you sure? And some of you are gonna say, well, it depends. And you're right, it does depend. But you gotta run the numbers and know for sure. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now. That's right. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe buttons, followed by that notification button. That'll help out the channel. Thanks. All right, all right, all right. Hey guys, we need to know our numbers. Not only do we need to know them, we need to understand those numbers because we, in our household, we are the CEO and the CFO of our household. So we can't rely on the professionals to give us um, needed information, all right? They're not lying, but a lot of information is missing. This is what I mean by that. Let me give you two examples of that. All right, let's say for example, that uh, you have the opportunity to know the returns two years ahead of time and i tell you that you can either get a return of 80 percent one year and the next year it'll be you'll lose 40 percent that's one investment the other investment for the next two years you can get a solid five percent which one would you take most people will take the one with the 80 40. And the reason why is because that gives you a two year return of 20%. 80 minus 40 leaves you 40 divided by two is 20. Uh, that's really not the case. We'll get into that in just a second. But let me give you another example. Let's say for a four year period now, I'm going to say that, hey, we're gonna have a choppy four years. We're gonna be up 50%, we're gonna go down 50%, we're gonna go up 50%, and then year four, we're gonna go down 50%. Looking at that, you would think, okay, bottom line is this here. I shouldn't lose any money because the four, four year average is zero percent which is true but you got to know and understand the numbers and i will always tell you run your own numbers let's run the numbers and see exactly where we at in these two examples first example two years we know first year 80 percent uh the next year after that you're going to lose 40 percent it's going to be about a 20 percent average huh. okay let's run the numbers first year end of that first year let's use a hundred dollars because a hundred dollars is easy math that's it okay you can extrapolate this if you want add more zeros but a hundred dollars is easy math so for the first year hundred dollars invested the end of that year oh here's 80 percent return you're sitting at 180 bucks all right year number two you're gonna lose 40%, remember that now, you're gonna lose 40%. And 40% 40 of 180 is 72. So at the end of year number two, you've got $108. I don't think that's uh, 20%. All right. Year number one, let's look at the other one with a consistent low return rate of 
First year, you're at 105. Second year, it's going to you're going to be at $110.25. $110.25 is more than this $108 at the end of this two year period. Now, let me just say something real quick. This here actually happened with the NASDAQ. And I was invested during that time. And I experienced this. The year, this year one was actually 1999. This year two was 2000. The NASDAQ gave you an 80% return in 99 and took 40% of it away in 2000. Bottom line, this is the bottom line result. The high flyers were people who stuck with those old values, plays, and and the old uh, blue chips, they actually made out over the NASDAQ in that two year period of time. But there's more to that story and we'll get to it. All right, let's move over here to example number two. Up 50, down 50, up 50, down 50, four year period of time, average return is zero, which is somewhat correct, yes and no. So let's take a look here. All right, that first year up 50, we're gonna use $100 for the easy math purposes. We're looking at first year, 150 bucks. Second year, remember 50% loss. Now we're looking at $100 is now worth $75. But year number three, we're gonna go back up another 50%. So that 50% is going to turn into 112.50. And then we got year four, 50% loss. It's going to take that $100 down to $56.25, which is down. 43.75%. Might as well just round it up to 44% loss. I don't think that's zero. I don't think you broke even. You lost money in something like this. Now, what you're going to see is you're going to see on a lot of those financial reports, uh, you know, all those various types of rating, you're going to see people brag about their average return. Keep this in mind. That is, they're talking about time-weighted returns. This is time-weighted return. This is a true statement. I still think it's misleading, that's just me. Over a two-year period, the average is 20%. If you were invested over that two-year period and you went from 80 to 80% 80 return to a 40% loss, that is not 20% but they're going to advertise 20% because they're trying to sell you something. All right. Over here, if you gyrate like that, it looks like you should at least break even and not lose any money. And in reality, guess what happened? You lost money. Don't be sold to build a goods um, when you're looking, especially when you're reading, um, you know, like investor relations, if you're reading pamphlets, uh, you got to realize those are there to sell you something. Look at the numbers. All right. Keep in mind that you're going to see most of the time they're going to use that time weighted returns. Time weighted returns is not the same as dollar weighted returns. Dollar weighted returns actually gives you your actual returns. What you're going to see also overall you're going to normally see the dollar weighted returns over a very long period of time, but in a very short period of time, you know, let's say five years or something like that there, it's a matter of playing with the numbers, right? If the dollar weighted numbers aren't that good, but the time weighted returns, your averages are, what do you think they're going to say? 
This two-year period averaged 20%. It's a true statement. But if you invested in these two period of time, these, these two, uh, in this two-year period of time, you didn't get a 20% return. If something like this happens, all this gyration is going on in the market over a period of time there, and it comes out to zero, chances are you, you're going to be on the losing end. That's what I mean. Take a look at the numbers, run the numbers, keep this in mind. This is something that I was made aware of from this book right here. I'm not plugging this book. I'm not getting paid by this book. I just read this book and it opened my eyes to a lot of things. Um, you know, I've been investing for a while, but guess what? I am still learning. And these were uh, information that was given to him by some of the best investors out there. So know your numbers, run your numbers. Once you know, you can do better, you can make the right decision because at that particular point, now if you apply what you do know to make the right decision, now you're, you're, you're empowering yourself. So with all of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video and just remember three things. Save, invest, apply what you know because knowledge is not power, it's the application of knowledge is power. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.